Well, this was a, a definition of Helter Skelter that, uh, that Charlie gave. Now, if you look at this white album, it's a Beatles album, there are many other songs. One of them is called Sexy Sadie. Sadie At or Sadie Glutz, also known as Susan Atkins, whatever you want to call her, she thought that the Beatles named this song after her. There's also a song called Piggies. There's also a song... in the Helter Skelter song? Nothing particularly in that song right there, except the definition that Manson gave of it. There's another song in that same album called Blackbirds, talking about blackbirds fixing their wings and rising up. Charles Manson said the blackbird uh, meant the black man. My reaction is that the prosecutor's opening statement went well beyond the bounds of propriety and it went well beyond the purpose of an opening statement. The purpose of an opening statement is usually to outline for the jury the evidence that the prosecution intends to present. But as you gentlemen saw, the, his opening statement degenerated into a defamatory, slanderous name-calling. It degenerated into some speculation and extrapolation. Uh, I think that uh, it was emotional in tone and in character. Start, start the black-white uh, revolution. Manson envisioned that white people would turn against the black man if they thought the black man had committed these seven murders, and ultimately there would be a civil war between blacks and whites out on the street. Mm -hmm. Manson told his followers that this would be a bloodbath in the streets of every American city. Manson foresaw that the black man would win this war. But later on, he said the black man, because of inexperience, would simply not be able to handle the reins of power. So we would have to look around at those white people who had survived, who had escaped from Helter Skelter. In other words, turn over the reins of power to Charles Manson. the conclusion that, the, that this was the motive, Helter Skelter? Well, I've probably spent between three and 400 hours interviewing former members of Manson's family, a few of them who are still members of Manson's family, and I came to this conclusion that Helter Skelter, as far out and as unbelievable and as bizarre as it is, was one of the prime motives for these murders. Now keep in mind, the prosecution does not have the burden of proving motive. We simply offer evidence of motive as circumstantial evidence that it was Manson who ordered these seven savage murders. Well, well, what does Helter Skelter, Skelter mean? Charles Manson, Helter well, Skelter means the black man rising up against the white establishment and murdering the entire white race. That is, with the exception of Charlie and his family who intended to escape to the desert and live in the bottomless pit, a place that he got from Revelation 9, which is the uh, last book of the New Testament. And why did the murders take place? Mind. He envisioned that he and his family would be the ultimate beneficiaries of a black-white civil well, war. Why the La Biancas and the persons in the Tate House? Why were they selected by Manson as... Well, you have to realize that if you're going to have a bizarre motor li uh, motive like this, it doesn't really make any difference who the victims are, uh, except the victims by necessity have to be white and preferably in the white establishment. But other than that... There was no particular reason. Do the girls really believe he's Jesus Christ reincarnated? There is evidence that they actually believe that Charles Manson is Jesus Christ. Vince, you refer to him as a megalomaniac. Uh, what's your interpretation? Where Why was this bottomless that? pit in the desert? Did he really have one? I don't think Mr. Manson had a bottomless pit, but this is what he told his followers. He promised them that they could live in this bottomless pit, and while blacks and whites were murdering themselves out in the street, they would live very comfortably there. Then ultimately, Blackie would come to Manson and say, take over, Charlie. We can't handle the reins of power. What specifically in the song, what lines are there? One who has an insatiable thirst for power, which I think Mr. Manson has, is there respect and adoration uh, for him returned in kind by Manson to the girls? My opinion on that is an unequivocal Any contact with comment on that at this time. Not yet, but I cannot. Would you, you want the jury to hear this song uh, played in the courtroom? I have a copy of the album, and uh, Mr. Stovitz and I very likely will play the album uh, for the jury, yes. Mr. Bugliosi, early in the game, uh, there was a great deal of confusion as to whether or not the bodies were mutilated or not. What? And that the, perhaps the, even the fetus was removed by Susan Atkins, or not, excuse me, that even the fetus was removed in the murders. Uh, can you comment on that? What the there was no sexual molestation, and in a medical sense, there was no mutilation. By that I mean no dismemberment. Uh, however, when you stab a body 51 times, uh, strike the head of the victim 13 times with the butt of a revolver, 
uh, shoot the victim once, I think in layman terms, and properly so, this is mutilation. But, but none of the parts of the victims were severed. The evidence true? will show that that is correct. Uh, just how important uh, will the testimony of Sharon Tate's father be in your prosecution? He's not an important witness for the prosecution, but in a big murder trial, you normally uh, put on the entire background, the total picture, and he fits into that picture. Did he work uh, into the hippie families uh, during the investigation of this case? This is what I understand, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Great job. Well, we might as well Thank not you. have any lights up there or anything. Yeah, well, you guys just get a camera. From the opening statement, Mr. Bugliosi didn't say anything that uh, any of us weren't aware of before. Uh, their theory, the bizarre motive, uh, is bizarre, and I think as Mr. Bugliosi indicated, uh, it is preposterous. Thank you, sir. Thank you.